Once again, we live, y'all. We live. What's up, man? How's everybody doing, man? Uh, how y'all, how my people doing, man? How's everybody feeling? What's up, Sammy? How you doing? Real mobbing, what up? See a century, D. Hughes. So with y'all, man. How's everybody day today, man? Peace to Dubai, John Connor. What's up, yo, John Connor, man? John got a new song. Yo, John Connor, hop up on here, man. Tell these people about this new fire ass song you got, man. Get up on here, man. See you, man. It's fucked up. You requesting somebody, man? They could be in. They could be on the toilet. They could be <laughs> doing anything. <laughs> Whatever you ready, man. Hop up on here, John Connor, man. How's quarantine? Spit a bar about it. You spit a bar about it. I ain't spitting no bars. Right now. <laughs> I did have a good day today, man. I went for a uh, went for a long walk. Sat in the park, man. I started writing, um, writing some music. Um, started working on this new song, man. Pretty excited about it. I get excited. You know what? Like, the, I'm happy when I'm working on music. Like when I'm when I'm writing or working on music, I'm like I'm happy. If I'm not doing that, I'm not in a good mood. Or if I'm, you know what I mean? Like, but when I feel like when I when I feel like I have music that I love, or I have songs and inspiration. That's just kind of what keeps me going, even in like tough, difficult times or whatever's going on. Like if I can express music and I express myself, then it puts me in a genuinely, uh, a genuinely good mood. You know what I mean? So. Um, got some good. I'll tell you one thing about this quarantine. Um, I have been getting some good sleep and some good rest. So I don't know why. I think it's maybe I don't have that anxiety about like. I got to go here. I got to go there because it's really, you can't really go nowhere. Like, so you got to kind of just like, there's no like rush and no hurry. So um, I feel good about that, man. You know what I'm saying? That's the one good thing. That's well, that's one of the good things about this core quarantine situation. Um, but, you know, I think we're going to be good. California, we're, we're still doing pretty all right right now, man. So shout out to everybody in California, you know, um, wishing everybody in New York who's probably getting hit the hardest right now. I think it's because it's such a dense population, but I think, um, I think that the medical staff and the workers, they're prepared for it and they're going to handle it. And I think we're going to come out of this pretty okay. We're going to be, we're going to be all right. What time is it here? It is, um, it is nine o'clock, 9 p.m. in California, man. 9 p.m. on the West Coast. West Side. Um, not porn. I don't know, man. Your name scares me, bro. I don't know if I want to go live with you. Anything with porn just is weird. You know what I'm saying? Uh, New Mexico doing okay, too. Too. Yeah, exactly. You got to be on your toes. But I think New Mexico is good. New Mexico is in a highly populated place. It's not like a tourist place. So long as you guys stay in the house for a little while, I think you'll be good. You and Royce got to work, bro. Yeah, I, I would love to do a song with Royce, man. You know, that would be super dope. Um, Darnell, what up? Um, Yeah, man. What's the first place you want to go after all this? The movies, man. I want to go to the movies. <laughs> I want to sit in a restaurant. I eat out a lot, so this is like forcing me to like sit at home. Um, okay, he said he did. Okay, okay. All right, all right. So, all right. So, let's go live, man.
We're going to go live with not porn. We're going to go live with you, man. My G, thank you, fam. Put yo, yo, what up, bro? The locksmith. How you Show feeling, you right. my dude? Shit, man, I'm feeling better than bad, man. Try to keep up the goddamn good work. Show you right. Where you calling from, my dude? Shit, man, usually Atlanta, but I'm in Dallas, Texas right now. Okay. Oh, right, Texas. Unfortunately. Texas is doing yeah, pretty good right now, man. Shit, man, I'm doing great, but I don't know about the rest of Texas, man. <laughs> Fuck them. I got I got my home fucking home studio and shit right here. There you go. There you go. I got the fucking HTC Vive and shit. I got Jay Dilla posted right here. And that's what's up, man. You ain't got to go hey, out for too much. Just to get it all done. Well, in Michigan, man, shit. Y'all felt like fucking everybody been like, not born. What the fuck? It's been my name since 2003, man, for my fucking filmmaking shit. Oh, okay. So yeah. you're, you're, you're a filmmaker? Yes, sir. I did videos for Little Fame, so dot X, KRS1. Shoot me a link so I can check out some of the videos. Name drop, name drop. Shit, man, I'll shoot you my fucking number ASAP. But yo, man, I got some motherfucking instrumentals right now. Well, send me a, um, DM me a link, man, so I can check some of it out. Hey, I shall. My but brother, yo, man. Real quick. What's up? I think that Jeffrey Dahmer just had an eating disorder. Your honor, let's honor the victims and make him a martyr. When do live and God is not a ridiculous dishonor. But I'd rather be right in the middle, league with every people, instead of in a soapbox preaching evil. It's unbelievable. The evil that's found in regular people is feeble and feeble people never ponder what was equal. White people. Bo, 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 bo. There it is, my dude. Hit me, no, man. Let me, uh, let me check out some of those links, though. Yeah, let me show you one instrumental real quick. Just My boy John Connor, man. You about to jump on here, my dude? You gotta, you gotta, uh, all right. Yo, bro, bro. the one, the only. What's cracking? What's going on, my brother? How you feeling? Man, I'm good. I'm, I'm humbled to be on your live right now, bro. Man, bro. I'm honored to have you, man. That yeah, new man. song is fire, man. I put, wait, before we even talk about the record, <laughs> when you hit me to be on your live, bro, I was in the bed. I'm talking about <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. I was just like, you know what? I was like, oh, man, because sometimes, you you know, you'll hop on somebody live. You be laying with no shirt on, looking. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I was like, you know what? Let me not put my dude on blast like that. I don't know bro, what he bro. doing. <laughs> like, you caught me. I was straight in PJ mode, dog. <laughs> Yeah, because what, it's, what, it's about, what, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock out there, right? Yeah, it's, tw it's 12. I was 12, up. Okay. And, man, I hadn't. So, you know, we put out the joint. So I was up, like, late last night making sure the mix was cool. Mm -hmm. So I didn't go to sleep till, like, 4 or 5 in the morning. And then yeah. I woke up hella early today. So, man, I'm talking about my body was just all thrown off track. I had a hunger headache. I didn't eat till mad late. But, um. Yeah, I'm good though, man. Man, dude, the new single is called God Level, right? Oh, God Level is the production team that produced it. The name of the joint is Infinity. Infinity, yes, Infinity. Excuse me, yeah, Infinity <laughs> got produced by God Level. Yeah, um, John Connor on there, straight spitting like he always does, man. Thank you. Um, is it is it is this part of the project? Is this part of the new project, or is it just like a le a, a loose song or? Oh uh, no, this, these are. So what I'm gonna do is new music Mondays leading mm -hmm. up to uh, the project SOS, which I'm gonna drop at the uh, at the end of the month. Okay. So I'm just uh, these are just joints that I've had in uh, joints that I thought was dope. And the thing is too, you know what I'm saying? I have my little hiatus, so I just want to rebuild that that confidence with the fan base that when John Connor say something gonna come, it's gonna come. So I just want every Monday to give people something new. And nice. honestly, bro, with everything that's going on, just give people something to take their mind off of the bullshit. Yeah, bro. man. Something to, you know, something to enjoy, something to inspire them, let them know that, you know what I mean? Like everything. Cause I feel like right now um, it's just so much panic and everybody, but you know, I don't know for me, mm -hmm. I feel good when I see people like yourself releasing music that's active. You know what I'm saying? When I mm -hmm. see, uh, you know, last week Jaren put out something. I see, you know what I'm saying? 
uh, Webby putting out, you know, like I see people active and, you know what I mean, like working. I'm like, okay, it inspires me. It makes me feel good. It, it, you know what I mean? And it takes my mind off of the negativity or the panic that might be out there. So Absolutely, man. It is important as us as artists to provide that for people, you know what I mean, for each other and for, you know, and for listeners. Man, bro, I 100% agree. I was telling my homegirl the other day, like, the issue at hand is so massive that us as individuals, if we just became consumed by it, you would go crazy. You know what you I'm saying? You go crazy, man. You know? I mean, no, people literally, what, what I think a lot of people don't understand is and it's a very important component of all this that's going on that's really not spoken about is the mental health issues of mm -hmm. all this going on. You know, people, you know, a lot of people who are teetering on anxiety, um, all kind of different things, you know, having to be locked in the house, having to worry about what's going to happen tomorrow, what's the new thing. You look on the news, you know, the news is basically feeding people's fear mm -hmm. and it's just like creating. So it's just like, you know, you have to be very careful people who have addiction issues and all these kind of things like you got to be careful with that because you know what if you're a person that's going to a meeting every week you know mm -hmm. what i mean and now you can't go to that in-person meeting you can do it over the phone or you can do it on the computer but that ain't the same as sitting face to face talking with your therapist or talking with a group of people and whatever you're dealing with so i think that it things like releasing music releasing content art that that's an escape and it is important mm -hmm. you know 100%, man. I, like you were saying earlier before, before I, I don't hear I seen you saying that, um, like that, that could be something that's cool. Like, let it be a release. You know what I'm saying? Like, let it, like, I've been seeing people, um, like people that paint, they've been going harder with painting and just yeah. going in their little world. I've been seeing, I seen some, it was a real cool story on the news here in Michigan. Mm -hmm. It was like these two little kids playing violins for the, for the neighborhood and all of that. Yeah, and it's that's just nice. like, you know, it, this is a time where I think people should be reflecting. I think that you also, you write about it that it, it could, the mental health aspect is real because I was seeing a lot of people, uh, like me, they turning the quarantine into the turn up. Like shit, I'm about to get lit. I'm about <laughs> to get high every day. I'm like, yo, yeah. that's not good. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's not the answer. Just find something, whatever it is inside of you, whatever brings you peace. Like maybe people needed this time to reflect. Maybe people needed some time to uh, actually think about um, all of the bullshit that we be going through. Like before the virus happened, it's like maybe those things that we were upset about wasn't that important. Wasn't maybe that those, important? You know exactly. what I'm saying? Maybe those grudges as we was holding wasn't that serious wasn't maybe that important. you know what i'm saying yeah. like maybe, maybe that shit wasn't that serious and I, I hope that that's what everybody comes out of this with you know um mm -hmm. it's crazy bro like uh, a friend of mine he lost his father and a nephew to the virus you know what i'm saying yeah what? here in flint man so it's like bro like it, it's super serious so People should take it very serious, you know what I'm saying? And and people should stay, while you're staying at home, take that time to just be grateful that you're still breathing air in your lungs, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Be grateful for the shit that you do have because, you know what I'm saying, yes, it is horrible what's going on, but don't let it defeat you, don't let it beat you, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. figure, go, go to that higher level, man. Yes, sir. Yeah, now that's... Wise words, my brother, man. I, I appreciate you, man, for sharing your uh, your words with us. And, uh, you know, the new single, Infinity. Yeah, uh, go um, listen to Infinity, y'all. Like, um, y'all that's in here right now, uh, listen to Infinity, produced by God Level, my man Mark Bird and um, Chastity. And um, it's, it's just me speaking my thoughts on what's going on, man. Dope, man. And get familiar, if anybody is not familiar with John Connor. Um, which I, I, I doubt many people are unfamiliar. But if you are unfamiliar, go on his uh, profile, listen to his music. We got some we got some dope stuff coming in the pipeline. Yes, sir. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be good, man. Everybody keep your heads up, keep your spirits up, and uh, we're going to get through this. Absolutely. Yes, y'all. Please, please keep your heads up. Stay happy. Stay positive. Tell everybody that you love that you love them. Um, let all of the bullshit go. Forget about ego. Forget about pride. Forget about all that bullshit, man, because at the end of the day, we all human. We all share this planet together. And if it's one thing, and I ain't gonna get too long-winded, but this thing connects all of us as humans. This virus don't care if you're black, it don't care if you're white, it don't care if you're a male, mm -hmm. it don't care if you're a female. You know, it's about just humans. Let's all just love each other as humans, man. Yeah, much respect, my brother. Thank you, dog. Absolutely. Oh, come on, King. You already know, man.
My brother. All right, we're going to talk soon. Yes, indeed. You already know. All right, for sure. Peace. Peace. Shout out to John Connor, man. That's that's my brother, man. You know, we got some dope music. We're going to let some other people get on here. We got my friend uh, Jenny about to join us. Jenny. Oh, I'm literally putting lotion all over my body because <laughs> I haven't showered in a long time. You haven't showered? <laughs> well, I've been going in. Let me unplug you here. I've been going in the ocean, uh -huh. and there's something about swimming that, like, tells the brain, oh, we're good. We're in the water. We don't have to actually shower. Has it been warm enough out there to, to be in the ocean? You feel like it's been, it's not oh. free? You're not free then? No, it's been so nice. So, actually, it was But I heard, of... they shut the, I heard they shut the, the beaches down. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's supposed to be out there. It was a little wild today, so I'm solo self-quarantine so i so i've been like by myself me too um, you too mm -hmm. i mean for me it's been an artist's dream mm -hmm. but i was like god i just have to get out so i rode my bike and i like i don't i like never break the law and i like never get in trouble so i was a little bit nervous mm -hmm. and so i snuck onto the beach um which was fine for the first hour mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden this chopper this police chopper <laughs> like comes up and i've i've never been this close to a helicopter before uh -huh. it is so close and it's just doing circles around me and i'm like i was kind of stunned yeah. yeah i was stunned and i was like waiting for them to say something but they never did they just were like staring at me and making circles and I was like oh no these are the videos that I used to watch with my dad when you're like <laughs> watching yeah. from the TV and you're like come on don't be an idiot man <laughs> get out the water yeah yeah I so, think the, the main thing is like they don't want because if one person does it then they see another person does it another person one, then he creates this whole congregation I don't think it's the fact that they don't want people getting exercise and getting out but if one person do it the beach is like a main a main spot you know what yeah I mean? and and i've been quarantined longer than it's been like mandated mm -hmm. um so i just like i don't want to be that person that's setting the wrong example but i just needed to get out i needed it and it was wild seeing how empty the beach was yeah yeah i can imagine but, yeah, man, it's, it's, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm basically in the same boat. Like I'm basically like I, my father, like I want to go visit my dad. I talk to him every day, but it's like, he's older. I'm just like, I, where, I don't where's want... he at? he's in the Bay area too. He's not far from me. You know what I mean? Um, but oh, you're up north. Yeah, I'm up north. Okay. I'm yeah. I'm in LA. I think someone was asking. Yeah, I'm in LA. So it's a little yeah. <laughs> So I, um, you know, but I just like, I, you know, I mean, I don't feel like I've been in infected or anything but still you just want to be cautious you never know well My yeah you never know and like i i i'm very selective with how much media i take in Me too. um and i know that it's gonna be a little while till we really really see the numbers so yeah. but um yeah just been pumping out yoga classes every day to nice keep people connected and like online classes yeah you should you should take some um streaming free every day from my instagram yeah, I've, been, I've been doing yoga every day like my own little postures and stuff every day nice nice do you feel like this time has been good for you from like an artistic standpoint or do you feel a little bit uh, less to, inspired um i mean you know what okay to be completely honest this isn't too different than my normal lifestyle. <laughs> Cause I'm same, usually, same, same, same. Like I'm usually at home by myself. I, I mean, I do go to the gym, which is, you know, that is just like, usually I go to the gym like every other day. So not having that little space, but I'm usually at home. I usually am like writing or working on music by myself in my car or at home. Um, and then I'll go to the studio and then I'm around people. But usually my day to day, I am kind of isolated anyway. <laughs> You know, but I think this last 
few days, I've settled settled more into the fact like, okay, I'm at home. I got a lot of time. Like, I don't have to wake up and feel anxious. Like, I got to do this. I can do that. I can just get up. I can start writing whenever I want to. Yeah. I can spend the whole day. So I'm getting in the groove of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I I definitely feel that. Like, I was actually really sick, um, like, the first two months of this year. Mm -hmm. Um. So I, I already binge watched enough TV, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. but now like, um, you know, my, my yoga studio closed and, you know, I can't be babysitting or doing any of that stuff. So mm. now I have no obligations. I'm setting my own schedule. So I'm like, oh, the opportunities are endless. And it's, it's interesting because I've talked to people, uh, that I normally don't talk to during this quarantine and the people that I normally talk to pre-quarantine I've kind of lost touch with so it's yeah. it's been super super interesting yeah, but I, I, I love, I love it's, it it's a yeah it's um it's an interesting time but you can you can make you know you make you make of it it's whatever you make it, you know so I'm trying to make the most of it and uh stay positive and I don't know yeah I think it's I think it's all gonna be and I know your friend that you had on before mentioned that someone he knew lost a couple of family members. So I'm not at all discrediting the intensity and how bad the virus actually is. But man, this is going to flip our entire culture and humanness on its head. Um, and I'm really excited to see. And I mean, Mother Nature is getting a break. How great is that? <laughs> that is. Um, so the pollution is down. Yeah. So there's going to just be so much beauty on the other side of this. And I just hope for every single person that they take this time. Like, yeah, your buddy was saying, too, like, some people are just getting drunk every day. And, if you know, if that's what they need to do, that's their journey. But to, yeah, embrace it. Um, well, I know me personally – I um I have anxiety sometimes anyway, you know what I'm saying? Like normally, but since this has happened, like it kind of a little bit has lowered my anxiety level because I just don't feel like the pressure of things. Like I'm used to being by myself. So being that there's like the whole world is forced to slow down. I don't know. It's kind of like lowered my anxiety a little bit. Yeah. I mean, my financial stress like i mean i was already worried about paying rent but now that everyone's kind of worried about it I'm yeah, like, it's just like all right <laughs> we all in the same boat you know what i mean like so i don't know but we'll you know we'll see what happens you know i'm, I'm optimistic i'm just kind of naturally an optimistic person so well i know i mean that's why i mean we connected immediately when i gosh how long ago was that now like two years Two years ago, yeah, on the video shoot. Yeah, that was like... Two yeah, years. there's just good good energy attracts good energy. So sure. um, I just, I always love seeing what you put out and what you're doing. And I mean, obviously, you. you're you're insanely talented. Like I, I've been comedy freestyle rapping. And every time I do it, I'm just like... Wait, so what you were... You were on a show or something, right? I saw something you were like on that show, right? Oh, well, that, yeah, that aired in February. It was a couple of years ago. That was for Women of Wrestling. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I, <laughs> I opened with a rap, but um, I just, I naturally love to rap, but it's more from a That's dope. comedy standpoint. And then I'm like, yeah, I'm like in my flow. I'm like, yeah, I totally got this. But and you I like get, go on but your you, but you're a, But you're a dope singer. <laughs> actor make sure you guys go to jenny's profile she's a yoga instructor a singer actor show her some love she's talented and a super uh, super sweet person i really appreciate you well yeah i mean honestly all i want to do in this world is make people laugh and make people feel loved and uh, if anyone watching this needs yoga i'm streaming live i'm putting out free content so that you guys can practice and move and know that you're not alone in this there you go you guys make sure you guys go to her profile and get some yoga and some rapping lessons <laughs> <laughs> i'll be at rapping lessons from you and then you can get it from me. <laughs> right, we'll talk later oh it's so nice to see you so nice to see you bye okay good night shout out to jenny man she's a uh 
you know, talented singer, actress, yoga instructor, all those good things, man. Make sure you guys check out her profile. Um, some other people. You guys got any questions, man? Uh, let some more people jump on here. Hello. How you doing? All right. Look, um, where is he? Bongo Charlie Boy. Hey, that's a cute looking cat. Yep, Mr. Whiskers. What what kind of uh, accent do I detect there? Where are you calling from? Uh, formal English, the UK, and I live mm, an hour and a half west of London in the countryside. What's the, what town is that, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, it's, no, it's about a half hour or so north of Salisbury. Salisbury, okay. Yeah, I've yeah been... and I'm, I'm about 10 to 15 minute drive north of the Stonehenge Monument. Wow, I've always wanted to go there. Well, it's on my doorstep. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, when I'm there next, I'll DM you a picture. Please. And that's in fact, I've got pictures. I'll DM on you, so check your DM. Yes, I, I mean, I've been to, I've been to the UK. I've been to London a bunch of times. I've been to um, Leeds, uh, Bristol. Oh yeah, Bristol. Love Bristol. Lots of friends down in Bristol. Artist community campaign commit. Bristol's got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bristol's oh, at Penzance. Oh, Penzance, lovely. I wrote a song down Beautiful. there once, of from the cliff. It went like I think it went something like, "Recognition is the realization of the peace and tranquility deep inside of me." And now I can't remember the rest. So really, I should probably try and search my brain to find the rest of that song. Yeah. Um... I just wrote. I just wrote this one. Research your theories and. Analyze projects. A diary of a civilian. I'm just one in 65 million. One in 6.7 billion. Where is this United Nations? Five trillion. PPE still not on the ground. Management star. What profound, qualitative and quantitative evidence? Yet more I have found. I do a. I do a technique of breaks and frown. I release the furrows of my frown. And then you know what I mean. And I was. Yeah, I'm just infused. I've just literally right. I've got the story again. I have been through, that's my list and my notebook, and like, wait right for this, right, talking about being creative, there's, I've written that one, hang on a minute, I'll show you what I've been like since Friday the 13th, I've written that book, wow. that book, that book, um, fuck it, I've written loads and loads of, loads and loads of rhymes, um, and there's another book, oh yeah, that, oh yeah, that book, there's a red one as well, there you are, there's the red book. <laughs> She got books and books. And wait, for it, wait for it. That's the report book. Could you tell I'm autistic or what? <laughs> and, um, hang on. And this is this is what this I call is awesome. this is the book. This is the book. It all started with five tribes and it ended up with World War Three. Wow. So there's Diana, and uh, and 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 yeah, I won't go into it. But that is um, I, I, that is that book. That's the music book. That was my daughter's music book. So this is my music book. Nice. And then, like, my ideas. And, then, and uh, yeah, so I have different books for different things. Because uh, I might get bored, so I go to that book. And then I go to that book. And then I go to I that have, other book. I have a friend. Um, she used to be married to a famous um, British movie maker, director. His name is Ken Russell. You ever heard of Ken Russell? No, but I'll Google him, just out Google of interest. He's, he passed away uh, a while ago, but he is, like, basically considered one of, the, like, top British filmmakers. He had a couple movies that were in the U.S., um, but he had this movie that was very controversial. It was called The Devils, um, and I think it was banned in the U.K. for a while. And I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. The one percenters that I haven't figured out a real name for them, mate. You know what I mean? The Rockefellers, etc. The one percenters. Yeah. God, UK's got a tight knit 
Ooh. I keep going uh, when I'm in my writing and then my friends because here here they've got a data that there's one and a half million people out of the 65 million that have underlying health conditions mm -hmm. and they promised um, they made the promises on their public addresses mm -hmm. and they're all dropping like flies and they're all in self-isolation, parliamentary dignities. I think Prince Charles is out of self-isolation now. Mm. And, oh, yeah, because um, Prince Charles got the coronavirus, right? Yeah, but it's all right. He's got his big palace, right? And Camilla was in one side and Prince Charles is in the other. Mm. And um, anyway, so 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 there, even to this moment, this is why I've just done, um, I've got this project. So when I was 17, I set up the Green Group project, 1987 to 1990. Mm -hmm. at Sydney College. You know, socio-economic circumstances, rubbish. First homeless at 15. Father, a police officer, paedophile, drug dealer, soliciting. It's all under investigation. Mm -hmm. That's by the way. So I, I then, 2003, lived on both peace camps because of the Iraq war. My daughter was in primary school. I was able to access moving her primary school to, to where we were at the peace camps. Mm -hmm. I filmed continuously. And that year... Uh, Co-op Bank lent me £6,000. I phoned my friend. He advised me to buy a Dow computer. The day I moved to the peace camp, I went home, put my computer together, got on the internet, and that's the birth of networking human rights. I then went on the computer to do it, made loads of phone calls, got the Whitaker's Almanac, called everybody I possibly could, all organisations that we need to network together. And there are so many organisations networking together, like like, for example, crisis in the UK, because the government here promised by the weekend 8,000 people would be off the streets in London. And then obviously you've got other, like, independent media people like myself, mm. you know, and I don't get paid. Do you know how much money I live on a year? Wait for this. This will shock you. £11,000. That's what they do to people disabled in this country. Wow. I've been in a bungalow. I'm in a housing association bungalow since 2006. Socio-economic constraints and inequalities like you wouldn't believe and, 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 and the, the bullying and, and all this, you know, because I've spoke up. Yeah. My father institutionalized me when I was 20. It's, I still didn't give in and I still didn't give up. I always dreamt as a child to have a daughter. I was very fortunate. My daughter's 23 years old. She, mm -hmm. she studied hard, worked hard. She, she went to an elite university, got into an elite university without getting the grades and came out with a first class honours, a Russell Group University. Wow. You know what I mean? We, 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 we've got a drive. We've got no money. Got no money. You know, I've got no money to go into this crypto thing. They've got a big campaign. They want to do 250 into this crypto money. The money I have is for when my daughter does return home to do a um, um, first... Um, you know, a deposit in a first month's rent so then she can do PGC and go into the teaching profession. At the moment, she's in Barcelona. She lives with her host family. She's a language assistant. She hasn't been out for, you know, because they state of emergency. Mm -hmm. She phoned me the Friday morning, said to close the schools. Within a few hours, she said, mum was state of emergency. Thus, my creativity has gone vroom. Mm -hmm. I haven't stopped. So what, what it is in my, in the way my genes work, is that I wake up in the middle of the night, have a couple of cups of tea, go back to sleep. If that's my pattern of sleep at the moment, don't stress about it, I tell myself. You know, do you know what I mean? And I look after all my friends remotely, and I have friends phoning up for legal advice. And yesterday I networked with another legal advice team about um, changes over here in the Mental Health Act and how it's going to affect people, but it hasn't bounced through Parliament yet. Um, you know what I mean? I just carry on, I carry on. This is, this is my motto flag I did at the Amnesty UK, Amnesty International UK AGM last year. It's backwards. I can't read it. Well, try that way around then. That's back to, that, there you go. Human rights. Okay, networking human rights. Okay, yeah. That's the name of my community project. And I just communicate with, when I can communicate, because I don't always communicate. So self-isolation is... I self-isolate. I have complex PTSD diagnosis and uh, as of 46. I'm now 49. Autism was diagnosed last year. Mm. And I've spent my life campaigning. Uh, that's my life, you know. And I, I've got another ditty, like, and it's more punk. So I wanted to write a punk song, so I thought I'd give it a try. If we'll the, um, feel the punk from pain inspired me till he make me 
cry. I learned about the third world before the age of five. Because when I was before the age of five, it was called the third world. So when I was two years old, I saw images of the Biafran War. You know, and and I I was had like politically conscious at such a young age that I never saw. I never. I always felt fortunate. She's and my knowledge right now, y'all. Um, I was always for, I always felt fortunate because the um, A B U S E S's were so normalized, mm. and it wasn't. You do know what I mean? I I didn't. Uh, this is a fascinating. Because, this is a fascinating story, uh, Andrea. But I don't want. I want to let some other people on here. I don't, but this is. Yeah, great. absolutely. Uh, that that'll do. Thanks no, for I, thanks for and no, and thank you. you thank you. For this without, Without guys like you being on in the middle of the night, how on earth would I get through my stupid wake-up times? I know, Thanks I a lot. And I hope your daughter and her family is okay out there in uh, Spain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just, you know, we all stick together, rebuild the communities now, isn't it? That's what the point about rebuilding the communities. That's great. I, I wish you well. Stay safe. <laughs> Peace to London, the UK. Don't you guys just love those accents? Uh, can I go live? Yeah, man, you got a request. <sighs> Yo. What up, What's bro? going on, my guy? I hope I'm you're doing good. well. I'm doing uh, good, I man. hope How you're you healthy. Doing? Good, man, good. Coming at you from Boise, Idaho. Boise, Idaho. I've been to that place before. Yeah, what you think? Uh, let's see. I've been there twice. Um, I like it. The last time I was there was uh, was dope. I had a show there. It was cool, man. Nice. Good to hear, man. Good to hear. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I know a lot of people want to get on. Uh, I just want to... My biggest thing, the thing that turned me on to you is, it was your lyrics, man. Um, Thank you. Man. I mean, your lyrics are fire. Uh, you know, you speak the truth. You you, you say meaningful things, and I kind of wanted to get your insight on on what you think about mainstream. You know, um, for the longest time now, you know, lyrics when you the beats will be fire, right? Mm -hmm. But the lyrics, I feel like people don't really listen to. Um, what's your opinion on that? Uh, you have to ask me a specific question. It's hard to uh, pinpoint exactly. You gotta, you gotta ask me like, you gotta ask me a specific question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I just, I, I just wanted to know, like, um, let me see. That, that, that was my question, really. You know, is, but you gotta is, ask. How like, you... You're, you know, you're making a statement, and then you're mm -hmm. so you're asking me to comment on it, but it's a broad statement, so. I think I'll be able to better suit if you think about what exactly you want to ask me. Like, Locksmith, what do you think about this specific thing? Or what do you think about, the, you know what I mean? So it's mm -hmm. hard for me to, I mean, I, I can, you know, I don't know. I, I'll be here all night. I can talk about music and stuff all night. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Uh, well, yeah, you know, for the longest time, you know, uh, uh, you know, mumble rapping was a thing. And, and okay. even before that, it was just talking about, for instance, you know, degrading women and, and talking about the clubs over and over and over. Again. But that's all. That's always hear, existed in rap, you know. Right, right. And when I hear your music, you know, it's about shit that's really going on in in, in, in real world. Um, okay. So, how do you feel about the mainstream? You know, going to the club, going to drinking bottles, things like that. Um, I feel like that's always existed. And I feel mm -hmm. like there's a place. I feel like there's a place for that. You know, I'm sometimes mm -hmm. I want to hear songs that are just about. Uh, I, I, like, I don't. I don't have to listen to songs that are only about shit that I do. Like sometimes, like you know what I mean. Like, I, I, I yeah. I mean, I listen to all kind of music. I think there's a place for everything. Um, sure. As far as like mumble rap, um, or whatever you want to call it, I think that. It's just, that's why I'm saying be specific. I'll just say like this, I'll just give you this statement. Mm -hmm. I like all kinds of rap. I don't just like traditional boom bap hip hop. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think that's, you know, I like some of that. I don't like all 
hip hop that's just 90 BPMs and just boom, bat, boom, boom, bat. Like some of that shit is whack to me too. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just like some stuff that is that's not traditional um is is good and some of it is not. You know what I mean? Like um so I, I don't I don't just say, oh, it's not this kind of rap, so I don't like it. It doesn't have a sample. It doesn't have the, the you know, DJ Premier type kicks or drums, so I don't like it. Like, I'm not like that. I like all kind of shit. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if you're dope, you're dope. If you're dope at doing something, you know, if you're dope at writing a trap beat and spitting it that kind of way, I like that. If you're dope at writing a boom bat type beat, I like that. If you're not good at it, then I don't like it. Like, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. to me, it doesn't if really matter. Good. But I uh -huh. think that sometimes we get caught up into like labels and labeling stuff that, oh, this is like mumble rap or like I, I, I talk about it in some of like my raps and sometimes and people, yeah. if you're really listening, you can hear my opinions on it. Like I talk about like, for instance, I talk specifically about when we talk about mumble rap. Well, what is mumble rap? Well, people are saying, well, they're not pronouncing their words and the way they're saying it. Well, not necessarily. It's just that they have a different dialect. Like when people talk about mumble rap, a lot of it is originating from the South and it's originating from Georgia, Atlanta. You know, okay. so when you hear people, when you hear people like Atlanta and you hear their draw on the way that they speak, it's different than people that you hear in the West Coast or you hear people in New York. You know, they have a mm -hmm. different type of dialect in the way they speak English. So obviously that's going to affect the way they rap. When you talk about Georgia, you're talking about people who are closer, um, their influence, because hip hop is an African-American it's a black and Latino culture. So when you talk about where hip hop came from, well, cool DJ Herc is a, it was a Caribbean immigrant. You know what I mean? He came from Jamaica, if I'm not mistaken. So what is Jamaica? Jamaica is dance hall. What does dance hall sound like? Well, it almost sounds like a different language. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know what right. I'm saying? So you may not even be able to understand them. Well, I kind of look at what you might consider like Atlanta sound or like the down South or what you might consider mumble rap. Are they mumbling or are they just speaking in different dialects? You know what I mean? So the way that they're flowing, it's more so about the flow and the rhythm, similar to how dance hall is. You know what I'm saying? Like dance hall is just like boom, 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 da da bay, da da You know what I mean? I mean, I'm not a dance hall artist, so I can't do it. But it's less <laughs> about you know when you hear when you listen to dance hall, you're not necessarily always listening for the deep. You know what I mean? Like the lyrical wordsmith. You know what I mean you're more so listening to the, even though some dance hall does have a message. And it does have sure. that information in there. But for the most part, you know, you're going with the groove. If the, if the dance hall music doesn't have a dope groove, you're not going to listen to it. And I feel like that's kind of like that with like when you look at artists, like I like Young Thug. I like some of Young Thug stuff mm -hmm. because I like the way he's written like, da -da 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 you know what I'm saying? Or even like yeah. more newer yeah. artists like Roddy Rich. It's not the most lyrical, but it's more melodic. And the way that they're writing the rhythm, the energy is dope. But I don't right. like it. Makes you, makes you move a little bit, you know? And if you really understand it, like I said, it really has African and Caribbean influences. So when I hear stuff, I, when I hear, like when I, when I heard Young Thug and I heard people like that, I automatically started thinking like the Gullah Islands, the, the, the Georgia Sea Islands, where they have West okay. African dialect that they mix with English. So when I hear Young okay. Thug and I hear Atlanta artists, I, I automatically make the connection because I'm already educated on where that comes from. Because that's yeah. black music has derived from spirituals, has derived from bebop and all these different things. So that's what I hear. So I, I, I'm very open, but if I like it, I like it. If I don't, I don't, so. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. So that's what I'm oh, saying. I, I, go, I can go on about this shit all night. So that's why I be like, uh -huh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. People want to ask me questions, ask me specific questions so I can answer it. Because I, you know what I mean? I, I'll talk everybody's ear off. But um, I appreciate you no, calling man. in, my dude. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a humble experience to, to talk to you, man. So keep on doing what you're doing, man. Absolutely, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, man. Shout out to Boise, Idaho. Some other people want to go on here. Uh, we're going to let some other folks jump on this. North Africa, Algeria, you know it? Oh, you call Algeria. That's what's up, man. But now I'm staying in Malaysia. I'm, I'm studying. Yeah. Oh, you're in Malaysia. Okay. Yeah. How you guys yeah. doing out there? Is everything good? I mean, things aren't too crazy yeah, yet? Or? Yeah, it's like uh, it's somewhat controlled, but it's not too crazy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's good, good. yeah I don't want to take a lot of your time. Uh, I know a lot of people want to join in, so, so I wanted to ask you. 
uh, Lofty Goals is like a life-changing album for me. Like okay. when I listened to it, uh, I was in a very dark spot when I listened to it. And like it helped me a lot uh, in that situation. So I wanted to ask, what was like the most personal like album for you to record? Like what was the most uh, personal album for me for, for you to record? Um, I mean, you know, they're all personal to me. Um, I mean, I think a thousand cuts was probably that was very personal. You know what I mean? Like, well, what was uh, therapeutic for you to record? Say that again. Therapeutic for you to record. What was that? Yeah. I mean, all all the songs are therapy. Every song I do is therapy. Is therapy for me. You know what I mean? Um, but specifically, when I was working on a thousand cuts, my first album, yeah. it was very therapeutic because I had my song. There's a song called "The Hardest Song Ever," and I'm talking about you know, yeah, yeah, I remember sexual yeah. abuse. So that song definitely was the most therapeutic for me. You know, um, I also talked. To, it's also a song called "Imperfect," where I'm talking about being with a woman and her having an abortion, you know, that was very things that I, I needed to talk about as an artist that I had to get off my chest, you know? Um, yeah. But Lofty Goals has a special place in my heart. Like I said, it just, it kind of like, it, you know, all my albums are like markers in my life. So that album, you know, I was in a place where I was just kind of like starting over again, you know, um, kind of finding myself. And um, so that album is, is special to me as well. But they, you know, they all have a special place. Yeah. Well, thank you for taking the time. Man. I appreciate it. Oh, man, be yeah. safe out there, man. Thank you, man. All right, Take man. care. Nice to you. Bye. Yeah, man. I'm gonna. Uh, I might jump back on here later. I'm gonna hop off this now. I'm about to go ahead and watch an episode of Ozark. I haven't watched my my episode tonight yet, so that's the move. Um, hey, man. Much love to all you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Oh. One of the most important things, I have a new song coming out. It's coming out coming out next week, April 7th. It's called With God. It's featuring my bro Exhibit. It's featuring my bro Razkaz and also Brevi. So please, man, um, go hit the link in my bio. You can pre-save my new song. It's featuring Exhibit and Razkaz. You can pre-save it right now. So if you have Spotify or Apple Music, as soon as the song is um, available, it'll pop up on your phone and you can listen to it. So please, man... Um, I can't wait for everybody to check it out. After the song comes out, we'll, we'll go live. We'll talk about it. And um, there's a lot of music that's on the way. I hope you guys like it. Peace and love. Stay safe.